Hola, como están? So, guess what, y'all? I started filming and then my neighbor decided to start playing drums. Can y'all hear that? I mean, they're good or whatever. I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna look back on this video to see if you can hear it. But um, I want to come back here by instruction of the Holy Spirit and share some pointers, some wisdom. And uh, yeah, I will be doing more of sit down videos, sit down and talk videos, just because it's easier and right now I don't have the equipment to like, you know, do vlogs and all the crazy stuff. But anyways, um, there is five things that I want to share with you for the waiting. Come on, somebody. Uh, I have found myself in waiting for promises that the Lord himself has put in my heart. Um, and I felt the Holy Spirit just inspired me today to say, hey, like you should share some of those things that have helped, I guess. And so I was like, okay, um, I usually don't like doing these things like, oh, five things that will help you, blah, 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 whatever, but it's going to be good. So here I am. <laughs> um, my first thing would be honesty. I am a huge advocate for honesty, um, especially with the Lord, just to be honest. Um, I have come to see that when you think something in your head, you don't say it out loud, whether it be to people or to the Lord, it can grow like it just becomes a cycle in your mind. Um, whatever you are thinking for, whatever you are believing for, whatever you are desiring, I would I would suggest that you say it out loud to the Lord, to people that you trust, and write it down. So I think these go hand in hand. Be honest and write it down whatever it is that you're believing for whatever it is that you are waiting for that the lord suggested or promised to you um those two things secondly would be get instruction from the lord i asked a friend i was like what if you had one golden nugget of wisdom that you would share with me what would it be and my friend said, and this was two years ago that I asked him. And my friend said, um, what was the last thing that the Lord asked you to do? Have you done it? And don't move on until he says that it's been completed, you know? And so I would suggest number two is get instruction from the Lord and do it. Whatever he instructs you to do, do it, you know? Um, Habakkuk 2 says, make the vision plain write it down run with it you know that you'll be able to run with it um the lord sometimes promises things that are not attainable very quickly because he wants to grow a relationship with us oh hi <laughs> and he wants to build that trust with us like yeah sometimes we're just literally not mature enough to receive the whole promise and it's his mercy actually to not answer some prayers very quickly because we are still complaining or um, we don't have the resources or we uh, have unforgiveness. Um, just so many things that if he were to bless us um, because we're believing for this thing and he were to do it right then and there, I think we would take it for granted and God is so wise, so his timing is perfect. And it's so easy to say this right now, you know, but walking it out is his mercy and it's better, you know? Okay, moving on. Number one, honesty, best policy. Number two, instruction and run with it. Do what he tells you. Number three would be stewardship. Number two is instruction. What did the Lord tell you to do while you're waiting? Okay, number three is keep doing what he told you last to do. <laughs> because I think that like 
I'm thinking of, I share this chapter with my friends a lot because James chapter one says that endurance or perseverance or steadfastness um, brings us into full maturity, lacking nothing. And then his peace comes and it just is amazing whenever the Lord is like, hey, it's okay. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. Can you please just trust me? And it's like, every time you surrender, this like fresh breath of air, and it also increases your maturity and your capacity to be flexible, your capacity to understand, your capacity to be more compassionate with others. It's just a bond when you're waiting. Um, okay, so I would say uh, be wise, you know, with number three is stewardship. Be wise. Make sure that you are attentive. Make sure that you are... Um, in the waiting, not giving up hope, I would say another verse that just came to my mind is um, we have hope because of the love that the Holy Spirit continuously pours out on our hearts. Um, and Jesus Christ is the hope of our glory. And so, or the hope of glory, I like to make it our, but <laughs> Jesus Christ is the hope of glory. And yeah. There is glory. There is glory in the waiting. Come on. Okay, I'm going to move on to the other one. The huge one, number four, is trust. Trust, trust. I have come to know that in many areas, one, the Lord is like, hey, um, wait. I'm like, but what do you mean? What do you mean wait? Where are you going? What are you doing? Why can't this happen now? <laughs> And I'm like, God, like, give me all the answers, you know? But he's, uh, he's so kind, you guys. A uh, verse that just came to my mind is love is patient. Ooh, come on, with love is patient. And there's just this kind of love that is built whenever you are like, okay, we're walking in this together because he doesn't leave us. He doesn't say something. He doesn't dangle something in front of our face and then be like, figure it out. No, his word is there for us. If you feel like, I haven't heard God's voice. I don't know what I'm doing, but he said this, but that seems so far away. We have his word, you guys. Secondly, he, the Holy Spirit is our helper. And I am a huge advocate about talking about the Holy Spirit because Jesus said, when I leave, I'm sending you someone. Um, and not only that, like he lives inside of us. And so if you have been feeling like you have not heard God's voice, just take authority over that. We cancel it in Jesus name because the word of God says that you are his sheep, his sheep hear his voice. And so any muzzles on your mouth, even that have been put on, we break them off in Jesus name. And I also, um, I also want to just say that it is a lie from the enemy like oh i haven't heard god because the lord is always speaking i mean and any little i will take it very simple as go sit outside on the grass and look at a tree i and go look at the, the the clouds or something um go talk to your neighbor somebody you that you trust the lord is like he loves us so much i believe that there's like he is just always speaking like he is always speaking and then obviously it's his word like there's so much instruction in his word for any little thing that you are feeling whether you're feeling anxiety for the waiting um whether you are worried like first peter 3 says like cast all your burdens on me says jesus for i care for you um so there's just so much relief that is my one of my favorite words right now is that there's so much relief in his word. There's so much relief in his counsel and his people. There are people who are trustworthy um, in the body of Christ. I would pray that you would have discernment also in the trusting. But um, yeah, trust is something that the Holy Spirit comes and helps mold inside of you. And I'm sorry if you've been hurt and it's hard for you to trust because that's a very real thing. 
Um, but vulnerability is right there alongside with trust. And uh, I would encourage you that you are not alone. Um, Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. And that is kind of like, Dane, it gives you this kind of like correction, but also like a comfort, like, wow, there's nothing that has not already happened. So even if you're thinking I'm alone in this, it's not true. Uh, you're not alone. And so, yeah, we just cancel that lie in Jesus' name. Okay, lastly, woo, um, I summed up my notes. Lastly, number five is wait. <laughs> you think you've been waiting? Keep waiting. Keep waiting. Um, in Isaiah, there's this verse where God says, like, wait for me. And that kind of just is like, okay, I love you. And kind of like gives me even compassion for the Lord. Or I like, I kind of just feel this like, like deep cost to deep. Like I kind of just feel him like, hey, please like just wait on me. Like he's not even saying wait for this wait for that he's saying wait on me and so i want to encourage you to wait you are waiting keep waiting and um yeah i would say that he is sovereign and he has a plan like god has a plan in jeremiah it says the israelites were going into exile or out of exile and he says, hey, but I actually have a plan for you and it's going to prosper you. It's going to bring you hope and a good future and I'm not going to harm you. And so I want to encourage you with that is that like God's intent for you in the waiting is not to harm you. It's not to prolong you. It's not to bring shame or disgrace. Um, in the waiting is because he is the author and the finisher of our faith it's not just he's the author and he writes things down and then he asks us to figure it out no it's he's also the finisher like he's going to finish what he started um yeah i another verse is him who began a good work is faithful to bring it into completion and so um, before you start introspecting or just looking at the mirror and saying like, hey, um, I've been faithful. Hey, God, I've been doing this thing and I don't see where you are. Hey, God, before all those things, I would say he's been faithful first. <laughs> he is committed to us and we love because he first loved us and so i just want to remind you that you would posture your heart again in humility because it says um he gives grace to the humble if you have been waiting but you feel like you have been waiting um in distress you've been waiting but you're worried you've been waiting for this promise but you're annoyed you've been waiting but you're frustrated i would suggest that you are waiting wrong um because he gives grace to the humble and i would suggest that you would submit to the lord so that the devil could flee it says, submit to the Lord, stand firm, and, and the devil will flee. He will flee. So there's tormenting spirits sometimes that think that they can come in while you're waiting and try to like get you to do something or to give up or believe something else. I don't know. Um, but in the midst of temptation, the Lord gives grace. Not grace so that you can just endure, but grace so that you can overcome. And he is so kind and just. And it's the Lord's responsibility to take vengeance. And it's our responsibility to be obedient. And so, yeah. I hope that this brings some kind of just clarity. But more so encouragement. And just freedom. That you would know him. And that... Um, he would draw close to you. So 
yeah i just want to say a quick prayer before i close this video and keep waiting keep waiting keep waiting keep waiting whether you're waiting for a family member to get saved you're waiting for healing you're waiting for a spouse you're waiting for a business you're waiting you're in all these things the lord will not let his word fall to the ground but also i would say cling to the lord more than you cling to possessions um because my goal is that your heart would be aligned with true humility my my goal is that your heart would be um stable and that the lord would come make his home inside of your heart and that you would feel his peace and so yeah i'm just gonna pray a blessing so father i pray that in your name jesus people who watch this would uh see how you set a seal upon their heart uh, that your love is more jealous that your love is stronger than the grave i thank you jesus that you died for us to have fullness the fullness fullness of your spirit the fullness and i thank you that this is a se season lord that you will do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond what we can think ask or imagine I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the one who writes our name in the book of life. And that is the most greatest reward that we can have. I thank you that in this season, Father, you have impregnated many people with dreams, visions. God, there's going to be people who are authors. There's going to be intercessors. There's going to be, God, uh, so many prophetic people in the marketplace. I thank you, God, that you are the one who... Uh, sets everything in stone but overall you are the chief cornerstone jesus you are a good shepherd and i ask that you would lead your sheep and i thank you god that you draw them lord to steady waters god that you're the one who anoints their head you prepare a table before them in the presence of their enemies does not mean their enemies can come sit at the table but lord you show off because it's who you are i thank you um God, that you are faithful to complete this promise. Even that verse, Lord, I can hear you saying, like, I, the Lord, in the proper timing will make it happen. And so, God, we trust you. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just bring relief and teach us how to pray, God. Teach us how to be humble, that we would accept your perfect and pleasing will. Teach us, God, in the waiting, how to think of things that are lovely. How to think of things that are pure and lord we commit this time this video to you we say not our will god but your will be done in jesus name amen okay i'm gonna stop now because i can pray forever <laughs> but i love you guys i hope this is encouraging for you if you have any questions you want to message me i don't know i have a lot of verses that the holy spirit will like just stir up in my heart that i'm like oh that's a good one for this time so i'm open to just chatting um but yeah thank you for watching my video i hope that you enjoy it and We'll see you later. Bye.